Okay, time is up and let's go over the answers. I'll give you a moment to grade yourself here. We still have a lot of material to cover, so I'm going to go over the answers rather quickly. But remember, we'll cover many practice passage questions that are specifically your level in our live workshop titled, Reading Passage Keys. Question 1. According to the first paragraph, the Roman Catholic Church primarily served as what? Let's peek at the passage. It reads, there are no colleges or formal organizations except the Roman Catholic Church that promoted the beliefs, histories, or traditions of the village people. That except means that the church did promote beliefs, history, and tradition. Back to the question now. Answer choice A is the correct answer. The church was the only unifying institution that instilled common culture in the United States. Question 2 now. In line 23 through 24, the author suggests that in comparison to villages in southern Italy, American towns are what? Let's search for some inspiration. The passage reads, The importance of family life in southern Italy is difficult to compare with anything in our modern experience, for even the smallest American towns do not develop such close relationships between towns and townspeople. Back to the question. That's why answer choice B is correct. American towns are more impersonal. There aren't as many close relationships. Let's shimmy on over to question 3. In line 29, bonds most nearly means what? Ah, vocabulary and context questions. Don't forget our handy dandy tip, plug in the vocab word. The passage reads, under these conditions, the bonds between members of a community became as strong as those between members of the same family. The correct answer here is answer choice B, ties. Let's plug that back in and test it. Under these conditions, the ties between members of a community become as strong as those between members of the same family. Sounds like music to my ears. Now lastly, question four, another fun three-pronged question. But now we know. There is nothing to be scared of regarding three-pronged questions. In fact, they are among the most straightforward of them all. The question reads, which of the following statements would the author likely agree with? And now we have our three statements. 1. Life in the United States is very similar to that in southern Italy. 2. The church played a significant role in the maintenance of culture in the United States. 3. Family bonds are more developed in Italy than in the United States. Heading back to the passage, first off, we see no indicator that the author thinks that life in the U.S. is very similar to Italy. Actually, the passage lists many differences, so statement one is false. What about two? Does the church play a significant role? Yes, sir, it does. The passage says, as highlighted in purple, that no college or formal organization except the Roman Catholic Church promote the beliefs, history, and traditions of the village people. So yes, absolutely, statement two is a green light. What about three? Are family bonds more developed in Italy? Yes, I think so. The author says, as highlighted in yellow, that the importance of family life in southern Italy is difficult to compare with anything in our modern experience. So back to the question. If statement 2 and 3 are correct, then answer choice D is our correct answer. See, three-pronged questions aren't bad at all if you take them one statement at a time. 
And now, just before we wrap up critical reading for this entire video series, I want to give you some quick review of literary terms. Sometimes in passages, they will ask you to identify certain writing technique terms. You will have to be familiar with all the common ones, so I hope you paid attention in English class because that will come in handy. But if not, we'll review many of the top terms right now. An allusion. An allusion is a reference within a literary work to a historical, literary, or biblical character, place, or event. An example of this would be, Come, come, Nerissa, for I long to see quick Cupid's post that comes so mannerly. That's Shakespeare. Feel free to look it up. An idiom is a common expression that has acquired a meaning that differs from its literal meaning. An example of this is, it's raining cats and dogs, or that cost me an arm and a leg. Can't use your arm and a leg as currency. An oxymoron is this, the association of two terms that seem to contradict one another. An example of this would be wise fool or jumbo shrimp. Mm. A paradox, a statement that seems contradictory on the surface but often expresses a deeper truth. An example of a paradox would be all men destroy the things they love. Alliteration. The repetition of similar sounds, usually consonants, at the beginning of words. An example of this would be sweet, scented stuff. Imagery is language that brings to mind sensory impressions. An example of this would be Homer's description of dawn as rosy-fingered in the Odyssey, which is a book. Caricature, a description or characterization that exaggerates or distorts a character's prominent features, usually for purpose of mockery. An example of this would be a cartoon of Abraham Lincoln with a giant top hat, a very thick beard, and extremely sunken eyes. Go to your nearest theme park to find one. A simile is a comparison of two things that uses words like or as. Love is like a fire is a simile. A pun is a play on words that uses the similarity in sound between two words with distinctly different meanings. An example of this would be, the title of the play, The Importance of Being Earnest, is a pun on the words earnest, which means serious, and sober, and the name earnest. Personification. The use of human characteristics to describe animals, things, or ideas. Using the word babbling to describe a brook is an example of personification. Cliché. A formal expression that has been used and reused so many times that it's lost its excessive power. An example of this would be happy as a clam or eyes like a hawk. Hyperbole, an excessive overstatement or exaggeration of fact. For an example, I've told you a million times already. I got that from my mom. And irony. Irony usually emphasizes the contrast between the way things are expected to be and the way they actually are. An example of this would be, medieval people believed that bathing would harm them when in fact not bathing led to the unsanitary conditions that caused the bubonic plague. 
Take a shower, people.